With PlayStation bowing out of E3 2020, many gamers have been vocal on their disappointment over the decision. Many are asking, why is E3 2020 so important to these people? Well, let's examine. What's up, people? What's up, people? What's up, people? It's your boy, MM2K, back again with another video. Do me a huge favor. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when your boy's dropping these doses. I appreciate all of y'all straight up because I am not, what? Too proud to ask. Let's get into it. All right. Y'all know how I like to do it before I break this up. Before I get into the video, rather. I like to break it up into three parts. First, I do the checkup. I do the analysis and then I drop the prescription. So first let's get into the checkup. All right, E3 or the Electronics Entertainment Expo is one of the biggest gaming viewing events annually and undoubtedly the most watched and reported gaming event in North America. Over the years, they've attempted to give more access to fans like another event, GamesCon, to the dismay of many entities that are part of this expo. As a result, many of those that participate have left the grounds floor to hold exhibits and demos or just decided not to participate altogether any further. Sony is the latest to do so, to the dismay of many gamers. They are not coming to E3 2020. However, many pundits and fanboys said that no one including Sony needs E3 at all, so it shouldn't even be a problem. Now on to the analysis. For those that think that way, their arguments are as follows. One, Sony and others don't need an E3 in order to connect to its fans. Two, the E3 hall has now become too congested, smelly, and difficult to navigate to justify keeping the expo. And lastly, you can project your message better via social media or private showcases. Now on to the prescription. Now, personally, I wouldn't consider it totally destructive to Sony you know, them not showing up, but they don't benefit overall in the broad, broad consumer mind share by bowing out of E3 2020. First off, who the hell cares if Sony or anybody don't need it for their fans? Their fans are buying PlayStation 5s or whatever the hell they're selling regardless. Secondly, people with maybe a little extra money to burn who are invigorated from the previous generation, you know what I'm saying? But don't know which system they're gonna get at launch this time for those that are interested to do so. And maybe it's their first time doing that. They lose out on not receiving the side-by-side -side contrast at events like E3 that provide very crucial, critical, in-depth coverage, okay? Now I understand that the pundits can't do their job in, 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 in its current format, all right? You know what I'm saying? But that doesn't kill the need for an E3 style event with all the major players involved, all right? First off, E3 is the most crucial face-off in gaming history. One that leads to contrast and real life reflections for these companies prior to release. Think about 2013 E3 for Xbox and DM DRM. You know what I'm saying? Without that contrast and the clever response by PlayStation in, in response to Microsoft's DRM policies, this is how you trade games on PlayStation. Without that, they don't cut that feature right before release. If everybody's just doing private shows, they can pretty it up and glance it up and make it seem like it's something that's okay until it gets into the gamer's hands and then they don't like it and then it's too late for everybody, right? And then if, and, and I get it. The problem can be the navigation on the showroom floor. I get that. And we need the media there to do their thing. So why don't everybody, including these companies and the media, promote a media day or two work and press the ESA heavily on something like that? You know what I'm saying? Because again, media is key to the hype of E3. What happens is even those consumers, the majority of consumers that may even be affected by E3, it ain't just us. We think that we the hardcore that make up the one to five percent in this community that we have, the, we're the tell all be all of all success here. That's not the case. Even though we're the ones watching E3 live, the news that comes from E3 gets filtered by the media. And even though those people, the other 95% that don't watch it live, what, what happens is that news gets cascaded to them in a week or two or so, and E3 news be lasting for a very long time. So it'd be having a very long lasting impact, okay? So we do need media there to be able to navigate the floor. 
Everyone should come and support though. This is the year that consoles are being launched. Come on people. So therefore everyone should come support the show and make it help make it wallop some money all right and then also reap the benefits of the exposure again while consoles are being launched then immediately thereafter say ea let's let's have a conference you know er everybody that is dismayed get together with the ea and say look you just made a whole bunch of money okay? we helped you do that because we were there and then you got paid from us all this goes away next year and for, for here on out unless big changes are made and these are the big changes that need to happen you know what i'm saying or none of us will show i bet you if something like that happens they will be more responsive especially after reaping the benefits of what they would get if everybody showed up at e3 2020 this is all gone we got everybody's going to be excited but we're not going to show up next year and this is going to be all for not for you if you don't do something right now but with that being said I, I, I'm not the high level executive. I'm not the one making all the big bucks for these gaming companies. They should figure this out. But with that said, don't make the fans suffer because of a few suits and pinky in the air, champagne sipping elitist pundits are agitated, okay? And my final point here, that um, social media is, is, a, is a feasible substitute for either. Come on, look, let's be real here. Social media makes getting a message out easier, yes. But expos like this help define choices for consumers like no other. When it comes to this cloud and this smoke, the smoke grenade or smoke cloud of Bibbawatt and Gigglehurt BS talk, these shows definitively tell the consumer how these products will benefit them particularly. E3 acts as a legitimate mirror for these companies to determine what do I have, what do I have in store to excite my consumers. And if they don't have anything to at least drum up in time for E3, that lets these companies know they are running too light on their portfolio. This litmus is so pro-consumer at the end of the day. In contrast to self, uh, in contrast to a self-curated event where it will be a lot easier for companies to pull the wool over consumers' eyes and even the media's eyes without any direct contrast or pressure to show as much as the guy did across the hall. Steel sharpened steel. And in order for that to work, the steel must be together. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like consumers needing these shows contrasted together, like how E3 currently does now. So in closing, all I hear is a bunch of grumpy journalists and fanboys who forget about the larger picture or quite honestly, the larger consumer, the non fanboy. Without E3, they lose out on info, and if Sony, and if Microsoft knocks it out of the park at E3, all right, where, and, and where they were willing to knuckle it up and show up, right, regardless of how well Sony may do on a solo presentation, it will be a missed opportunity for Sony to do even better to have that direct contrast with Microsoft to say, okay, they did okay, but we're still Sony. It doesn't matter how well they do. Again, if they do well in contrast to Microsoft right there, it would do even better for, for Sony to help solidify themselves going into the future, okay? Period. You can't, you can't sit there and seem like, you can't be the top dog on the mountaintop and it seems like that you wanna scramble away, period. And that's it from your boy, MM2K. Hey, yo, let me know what you think about what I had to say in the comment section below, because like I always say, who cares what I think? But if you did like what I had to say, check out the links below to follow me. Hey, yo, I do a show called Scram Punks. It's with your boy, Dirk Griggity, Snow Bunny, Neethos, bunch of other people to help support the show. It's on Dirk Griggity's channel. Check out Scram, I'm hashtag Scram Punks for more information on that. Also, check me out with the Broadband Bullies. Check me out on the Hard Knock Digital Culture. And lastly, check me out on the Stadia Dosage platform. Links to all that below. With that said, you all have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Peace.